Okay. Uh, first, I would like to say America intended to damage Iraq since 91. Once forever. So they started in 2003 when they occupied Iraq. I prefer use term occupied rather than invade. Occupied Iraq. First decision was disband to disband the Iraqi border police and make Iraq an open land for the intelligence services of neighboring countries and gang thieving antiques, drug dealers, and human traffickers as a gateway to creative chaos. This is their policy. Of course, they disband the army as well. So Iraq land is open. Uh, they also targeted their destruction upon educational institutions, which is the most important thing, and universities. They were targeting the national identity to reformulate it into a sectarian and racist identity and to spread ignorance and illiteracy among the Iraqi people. The United States have built huge military bases throughout Iraq and Israeli headquarters spread also throughout the country, especially in northern side, which is called Kurdistan, which I don't recognize this title. Why not Assyrian Stan? <clears throat> they established brutal religious forces such as ISIS, which enjoyed American protection and support. It's true to say that popular uprising is motivated by demands for basic rights, including the provision of employment opportunities for the vast majority of the masses, more than 80% living in poverty and hunger. But the main objective is to restore national identity and liberate Iraq from the clutches of foreign control. Therefore, we see that revolutionaries wear the flag of Iraq and sing in its name, prompting all segments of the people to join and support the uprising with full force. It is a historic and articulated moment of this battle which will determine the fate of Iraq and the region as well. The city of Nasiriyah, this is southern of Iraq, and this is the source of all uh, revolutions and uh, uh, left-wing uh, parties and movements started from Nasiriyah in Iraq. The city of Nasiriyah was the first by raising their real slogans, which they are. Yes to Iraqi national sovereignty on our land, sky and water. No Bremer's constitution. No to United States and Turkish bases and to Iranian hegemony. The people must decide their destiny, not the 
corrupted parties and foreign countries. This is what they said and clear everywhere you go in Iraq. Information from Iraq confirms that appraisers need to unify and more coordination between field commanders must be greater than what is happening now. But however, there is, turning, there is no turning back or stopping in the middle of the way. They have all declared that is either victory or death. I am ready to answer all your questions in details. This is a summary. I didn't say like this. The situation in Iraq, when you go to Iraq, you can smell death over there, everywhere. From the first minute being in Baghdad, no one street is OK. Everything in Iraq damaged, like Russia and Germ uh, Germany in, uh, after the Second War. This is Iraq now. They didn't build anything, even one street. Nothing, just people do. No electricity. Do you know how, what about the temperature? Temperature in Iraq? 60, 65 degree. And all trees dead. But still Iraq is alive. No electricity, which is, a, this is uh, 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 intended by the invaders forever. And they said it, by the way. <sighs> and no schools. Iraq, the first country in the world where the darkness everywhere, the Iraqis have universities, <coughs> schools, <coughs> libraries, everything. Now, no schools. You can browse on the internet and check up. See, from clay, no desks. On the ground, they are fighting, not only to, to study and have to work outside to get maybe a half dollar for their family to have one bread to live in. So I think this is a clear picture and clear reason why the uprise, uh, this uprising emerged. And this uprising not only affecting, influencing, I hope, look, you can't grant anything. You can't. No one can. Uh, you can have an example in Russia. Early uh, uh, last century. The first one failed. All against us. All people, everywhere. Why? Because this uprising, if achieved its victory, then Iran, Iran's regime, the first regime will collapse, and the Iranian ready to uprising, waiting the right moment, waiting us, this uprising then followed by Saudi Arabia, and so on. It's like a domino. Then, 
United States will lose its bases, its military availability. That means this is critical for them. This is why within less than one week, three high profile officials visited Iraq to run the situation, to control it. And all of them from both sides, Iranians and Americans followers in Iraq, they meet each other daily and said they forgot about their uh, 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 problems and fightings, their own interests. But they said it clearly last week, we are in one boat now. So they united as well against Iraqi people. Iraqi people have no one, just themselves. They are by themselves. This uprising, no party, whatever party involved in it, because all of them, regardless the titles, traitors, they are working for foreigners' interests. Iraq is now, by the way, which is this revolution. <clears throat> you can't see an example like it or similar to it over the history. Over the history. I mean it. I know what I am saying. Over the history. They will change the world, entire world, if it achieved its victory. Now, on the street, they are exercising more than communism, sharing everything, creating their new city, their new life. They fixed what this shit government damaged in Tahrir and other areas, cleaning everything. When you go over there, you don't need to think about food, clothes, hairdresser. It's a town, and everything for free. Sharing everything. Uh, washing their clothes by some... Uh, uh, some, lady, some ladies, yeah, and with regret, I can't give the right record of victims, but according to my knowledge, and I have connection with the inside, with the revolutionaries themselves, daily. Some of us, we are around the world, work together uh, to, to, to help them by any means. Uh, more than 600 killed. More than 600, if not much more, and more than 17,000 injured, most of them seriously injured, and most of them exposed to, to sarin gas. They, yet, when I talk to them, don't ask for anything. They just say, please let the people 
around the world recognize our situation. That's it. But they need urgently medicines. Not food, medicines. This is the short age. Medicines. Doctors struggling to deal with horrible uh, situation on the street. And they are the only uprising. Walking just forward with their flag, Iraqi flag, in their hands. And the special troops shooting them. Never retreat. You can go back to videos, and you will find the reality. Never, ever retreat. And, why, and uh, uh, just last night and early this morning, a great, great battle uh, 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 in uh, Nasiriya and uh, Tahrir and uh, Sinek, which is very close to Tahrir. <sighs> Three uh, areas. Thank you, and it will be my pleasure to answer whatever question you just forward. started or initiated the process to stop the interaction or the action with uh, the embassies of the recent government. Also, they are asking to withdrawing and chasing the people from Iraq who were a politicians and they steal the money of the Iraqi resources and they ask to stay in Australia. We have many of them here in Australia. They investing their uh, money 
and assets which is already stolen from the Iraqi money. One of them that I know, and it is very obvious to the media, if you put his name on the media or YouTube, you can find the, the number of corruption that he has been accused of. His name is Majid Al Nasrawi. He was the governor of Al Basra, which is one of the uh, cities in the, in the south of Iraq. And uh, he steal all the budget of that governor and run away with this money to Iran. Then he came to Australia and now he's living one of the, I think Melbourne or Sydney. And he needs to be, you know, uh, investigate this co condition. And maybe you can find more, Some more of them. Well. Sorry? And also, at, as he said, Khalid al Atiyah, and he is also one of them. So the, 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 the protesters want these people to be investigated and uh, uh, deported from Australia and uh, some of the countries I heard also from the media that um, they withdraw the, their uh, citizenship from the officials who run away to, for example, to Netherlands. One of them, I think her name is Hanan Al-Fatlawi. And also now in Holland, there is uh, the, the, the defense ministry who is uh, uh, accused by the, you know, the Sweden. crimes now. Sweden. Now, Swede, yeah, and he is also now they, they investigate his condition and they want to withdraw his, um, the, the, whether the Sweden uh, uh, citizenship from him. And there is lots of them, lots of them. All the, this is a very important point that most of the Iraqi politicians and officials, they holding second citizenship. It's not the Iraqi citizenship. One of them is an ambassador, I think, in London, and he is holding another citizenship. So he's not Iraqi to present the, the, the Iraqi government because he has different citizenship. The same with the president. Yeah, the he president. Has a British citizenship. No, no, uh, France, France, France citizenship. And now, and I think they are going to, yeah, and the, the, the Prime Minister, the Prime Minister for France. And also he is now investigating to withdraw his citizenship from France. The, uh, uh, what's his name, the Prime Minister? Adil Abdel Mahdi. Adil Abdel Mahdi. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's the assets. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They buying lots of uh, real estate here and a very luxury real estate and, and investing under the name of their relatives, sons, friends. So it is, it is really a disaster that all the Iraqi people, all the, uh, the, the, the oil's resources, it's, it's within their hands. If you hear the numbers, it's something unbelievable, trillion millions of dollars has been stolen from the Iraqi people. This is the money of the generation. It's not for someone. And as you know, here in this country, nobody can touch the budget of the country. So we had a letter to the Australian government and we explained all the situation in the past 
and what is happening now in Iraq after the 1st of uh, October until now, and what is happening to the demonstrator, the peaceful demonstrator. They don't have any kind of, you know, weapons. They have, as my colleague said, that flags, only the flags, the Iraqi flags. They so killing them. To watch them first to stop. Yes. Because yeah. this is treating. Yeah, yeah. treating, yeah. treating yeah. the yeah. gas. Yeah. yeah. Tear gas, uh, lessen its uh, effect. Uh, it's horrible. Even, look, they send some, some uh, groups. They, they want to continue. Yeah, sorry, I just want to yeah, com yeah. complete this. So we, we want this letter to, uh, to achieve the government to have an action. And we want, at the beginning, I want to send it by email to the Minister of the Foreign uh, Affairs. But then, as we are here, I think it's a good opportunity to put this in the hands of the parliament to have a discussion about this situation because it's a very important uh, issue. And I said here by the you know the, on behalf of all of all the community in uh, in Brisbane I said here we believe that Australia is the country of justice freedom and democracy. Therefore, we are putting this matter in your hand to support the Iraqi people and to stop the bloodshed in Iraq. And all the people in that demonstrating that we had yesterday agree with what I put in this letter. <laughs>